Good morning, Fakeaholic friends. This is my fertilizer follow-up video to the video I did yesterday where we were flood irrigating the orchard and I discussed some of the um, benefits of different types of fertilizers, why we use fertilizers at different timing and so forth. And most of our fertilizer is injected at our uh, main irrigation pump. Um, well, I say main irrigation pump, I'll say again, we pump water from the Sacramento River in a 15 horsepower pump, and I guess that could be our main irrigation pump, but we hold it temporarily for like up to 15 hours in a ditch that's turned into a temporary reservoir. Um, it's a drainage ditch, um, primarily, but during the summer we use it to hold irrigation water, and from there we use a 5 horsepower pressure pump that goes through sand media filters, and from there we irrigate our chestnut orchard with it, but also our figs. Um, but I also have um, the ability to irrigate the fig trees with well water, and I've done that a little bit, um, especially since when I plant new trees there, they require much more frequent watering, you know, sometimes daily during hot weather. But after a month or so, they um, get the roots established well enough and they're able to deal with irrigation every four to five days like we irrigate our other orchard. Anyway, so there's quite a, a maze of um, plumbing I have going on here because of accommodating different um, sources of water here. And for right now, I'm using my well water because I don't want to fertilize my chestnut orchard with um, this fertilizer that I'm putting on today. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, this time of year, we focus primarily on um, potassium to help with fruit development. But now, um, since some trees are new and we have planted oh, about 15 new trees this year and some trees are struggling for some reason, one or another, um, I'm using a more broad um, water soluble fertilizer that is 20 20 20 for nitrogen um, phosphorus and potash potassium uh, but it's also got a little bit of tiny amount of boron some copper iron manganese molybdenum easy for you to say and zinc um, and they indicate the sources there. This is a water soluble fertilizer and um, so it comes in granular form. Um, some of the hydroponic shops you know may have some products similar to this but probably not as much. My, my um, um, chemical fertilizer supplier recommends this to growers when they're planting new orchards and you know they do a drench watering at the time of planting to help get them started. So I'm injecting um, um, 25 pounds of this into my orchard, which is about an acre and a quarter. And I might do so again in a, a couple of weeks. Um, at my main sprinkler pump there, I, I've got a, another pump that's about a one horsepower pump. I don't remember if it's one or one and a half horsepower. And that is a pump that solely is to create a circular flow from the water source, the the pressurized water back into the pressurized water just to create a flow and it's using the same device that I have installed here and I'll sp spell this um, on my video there but it's from Italy I know it's a mousy injector or, or I don't think it's mousy I used to work with a guy named the last name of mousy so I get that confused I'll spell it but what this um, does is create a venturi effect and the same well many of you don't drive I guess old cars um, like we've got my mom's 1980 Firebird that has a carburetor but none of my other vehicles have a carburetor they're all injected engines but uh, many of you anyway know how carburetors function and it's by creating a pressure differential from getting restricted flow to um, all of a sudden opened up and at that point where it just opens up and it's hard to tell here but this is where it's restricted and so the water's flowing this way and just behind that it opens up and so there's a lower pressure 
there and so it creates a suction and so this is um, a simple device that um, any homeowner could also use there are some other versions sold I know online on Amazon and so forth um, and I tried one of those to take water out of a bucket and it worked poorly for me for some reason I don't know what the problem with the design of that is but um, I'm certainly knowledgeable enough about the principles behind it I just don't know why it didn't work so here I have um, water flowing and I have a valve here I don't always inject fertilizer so normally these valves would be closed because um, I don't want water coming out of there water is coming out over here up and up and around but I'm also letting some water pass through here and this goes out to the orchard here um, by closing this valve a little bit more I would create more flow through my injector I was saying that again I'm not sure what the camera is pointing right so by closing this valve more I would force more water to come up this way across and it would suck more fertilizer through the injector. Um, I've adjusted it. If I open this all the way, well, it's not gonna. It's gonna go through the point of least resistance. It's not gonna. Not much will flow through that restricted point, and I won't get any vacuum or not enough to suck any fertilizer. So here, um, I have some great duct tape. You know, I think that farmers get accused of fixing things with bailing wire. I think duct tape is probably something I use more. I lost my um, main hose for some reason. Um, I think maybe a worker thought it was trash just because it was old um, and got thrown away or my son likes to throw things away he thinks I don't need. I don't know. I'd like to blame someone else I guess. But I don't know what happened to it. I may have misplaced it. So I got this other hose and it was a little bit too large so I try to create a seal. This water dripping here is just because of these darn cheap PVC valves. I tried to buy the best quality I can but they still don't hold up and it's pretty frustrating because with that, if that gets worse I need to replace everything up there and maybe need to cut further down in the ground. So one thing I like to do um, is maybe put attachments with um, threaded pipe fitting so that it's easier to replace things if I need to. Anyway, so this is just water dripping through the valve there. It's not um, significant. So I'm injecting fertilizer and you know, many of us have trash cans at home, I think. Um, this is just a trash can that I've used to um, dissolve the fertilizer solution in. Um, one other thing besides the um, fertilizer that I showed you the label of, I'm also injecting fulvic acid. That's F-U-L-V-I-C acid. And, you know, I know that uh, my friend Keith back east, KK, people call him, um, he um, had talked about how he was using fulvic acid from a hydroponic shop and helping his plant. And, um, you know, I didn't really know much about that at that time. I took fertilizer college course um, almost 40 years ago and I don't know if they even knew about it then but um, from my understanding I think it's an extract from peat um, but my fertilizer supplier especially my distant cousin who's been in the business for 50 years literally he says it's, they've had some amazing results with it these large fertilizer companies they largely uh, make their own blended fertilizers um, to meet different crop planting needs and so it'll have the different ratios of nutrients and no like i mentioned i use potassium thiosulfate well that'll be one of the ingredients they'll use phosphoric acid which they will not sell me because it's too um, hazardous um, uh, fulvic acid is fine if it's on your skin it's not a strong acid we're doing worse by putting pop in our stomach soda in our stomachs but um, not that I'm recommending you drink fulvic acid. I'm sorry to put, bring up that comparison. Anyway, I put that in here and my um, 
understanding from what I found online about it, because my cousin just said, hey, it's great. We really got good results by adding that to our fertilizer, um, is that it makes helps make the nutrients more available to the plants. And so we're spending money for fertilizer. Let's make sure our plants can use it. So um, I'll probably inject this fertilizer. I just started this um, about 15 minutes ago and it's gone down a few inches. I'm trying to inject it um, fairly quickly because the trees don't really need more water since I just flood irrigated them yesterday. But I wanna get this done because this is another complicated situation I have to deal with. I'm irrigating right now with well water. Unfortunately, my well water has a lot of iron in it. And um, I tried to rely on just that for the fig orchard since I could control the timing more. My five horsepower pump supplies way too much water to irrigate just my figs. Um, I can irrigate five, six acres with that at one time, not an acre and a quarter. So what I want to do is get uh, this fertilizer injected today so that while my chestnut orchard is still being irrigated for another five hours today, when this fertilizer is finished, I can go ahead and flush out my well water out of my drip line so that they don't clog up all my drip emitters. I've replaced my drip emitters four or five times because it's being plugged up with iron. So it's a very frustrating situation. So um, I hope that explains things and I think that this is a, a step that anybody could use if they have their plants on a drip system. This is an easy way to apply fertilizer to all your plants. On the other hand if you have trees of you know varying sizes you might be better off just mixing up your fertilizer in a, a bucket and put it in a watering can and applying you know more to larger plants and less to smaller plants, more to struggling plants, less to very vigorous plants and so forth. So again, this is just showing um, the tools that I use here for applying fertilizer. Um, I'll go out to the orchard, just show the drip irrigation quickly in a minute. Thanks again. Okay, here's just a quick wrap up. Now I'm out at the orchard, which is, oh, I'm about 150 feet away from where I'm injecting fertilizer. Had a one inch irrigation line that comes here and it's not quite adequate. It was adequate for the three rows I first planned to plant here. It was adequate for four rows. Um, it's not really adequate for seven rows, but it's doing the job okay. Um, and I did reduce from, um, um, let's see, I think I had two gallon, it was in liters. I think it was eight liter per hour um, emitters and now I have four liter emitter four liters per hour emitters um, to help um, keep the pressure up. Um, this is an ababiera fig tree and I'm just showing so this there's seven risers here where the pipeline comes up from the orchard. Um, I tried to keep it upright with a t-post but the t-post is bending over um, to that t-post um, or there's another T-post back there rather that I have a wire attached and it goes all the way down and I've tied my branches to that branch when they were young and also have it supporting um, my drip hose. And from my drip hose I have a drip emitter on each side of the tree. So two drip emitters per tree. So right now fertilizer, a small amount of fertilizer is being applied to that tree. I have a volunteer blackberry growing there. I see the birds not only eat my figs, they also plant other things they've eaten. Um, so, you know, right now that's um, about one gallon per hour coming out of each emitter. So this tree's getting about two gallons per hour. I would um, irrigate this orchard, you know, perhaps. Uh, 14 to 16 well anywhere from 12 to 16 hours um, every four to seven days depending on the weather and um, you know the, the stage of year two if in spring we have a lot of um, damp soil still we you know don't need to put on as much water so that explains that and I have a drip line that goes all the way down the row um, it's getting pinched between some tree branches and so forth, but the flow is still fine with the, especially with the smaller emitters. So, um, you can see the water that we put on yesterday, we put on a lot of water here. It's all 
percolated um, through the soil. I'm standing at this point right here um, at about five or six feet away from the trees. I have a drain the drainage line I mentioned yesterday and it's about five feet deep. Uh, big huge equipment uh, um, on a track um, like a crawler tractor um, type system with a big um, digging chain behind it with a hopper for the sand and gravel. So that water I put on is now helping flush out those salts that I mentioned. It's already gone off the surface and we can walk on it without getting muddy where there's some grass at least. So anyway, I hope that helps explain things further. Again, thanks for watching our Figaholics videos.